will start from where we have left. We have left at aphorism 92. So we'll start from aphorism 93. I think we will do around. We will do t up till aphorism 100 today. We'll complete 100 aphorisms today because after that uh, it will be around about this. Just a minute. Because after 100, the case taking or the understanding of epidemic fevers or epidemics will start. So we will do it next time. We will not uh, do it today. But today we will do about what are the more points which we can ask in the case taking uh, in the chronic diseases. What are the fine things which we have to look for like the accessory symptoms. So those things which we will discuss today. So let's start with aphorism 93. Uh, Rishabh, screen over here. Share. Yes, sir. Okay. So, if the disease has been brought on a short time or in the case of a chronic affection, a considerable time previously by some obvious cause, then the patient or his friends, when questioned privately, will mention it either spontaneously or when carefully interrogated. So this thing is about some kind of cause. There has been some obvious cause. You know, when you're taking the case, you're getting some symptoms. Like recently, uh, I had uh, a male patient who was having some problems, some joint pain and some backache and something like this. His wife was already taking medicine from me from past one year. She had this uh, cellulitis in the eye because of which the eye had to be operated, the eye had to be removed and then it has started on the other side of the eye. So she came to me at that time when the inflammatory process started on the other side of the eye. So uh, this gave me some, because I was asking her that, you know, any kind of... Uh, infections or any kind of some things which you had so she said she denied it completely so but i had this thing in my mind that there is some syphilitic process you know and that she has been contracted with the that miasm so because of those symptoms because of those that understanding i was giving her an anti-syphilitic treatment which was doing good on her she was getting better by it so recently two months back his husband came to me for the medication and everything and there also there were some uh, few symptoms which pointed into that direction some uh, that kind of eruptions the tendency of that kind of eruptions so in those cases when you you know there is something going in your mind when you're taking the case when you're looking at the case you know that there is some obvious cause for this thing so we have to ask those questions the patients or the attendants, they will be more comfortable answering those things in private you know, when there is no one else in the room. So even in private, when you are asking them, either they will spontaneously tell you about it or you have to very carefully interrogate it. Like the earlier patient, the first one, the husband of that lady, when I asked him privately that, did you had any kind of extramarital affair or you have gone to places? Did you had any kind of uh, this relationship or so he denied it first. But then I kept on asking and asking and he then he he said that, OK, I, I had a friend. There was this girl, but I never, you know, got physically uh, related to her, but I was not ready to accept it. So recently he was, uh, because you you can see that, you know, that that there is this embarrassment in the eyes and embarrassment on the face when you are asking that question. So you get that, your, you get your answer. So recently what happened that he was applying for visa to some country and there was this, uh, you know, mandatory medical checkup which he had to go through. So when he did, he tested positively for syphilis. 
so there are many things you know the kind of questions which the patients are embarrassed about we have to very carefully interrogate it we have to very carefully ask about it but then there many times the patients they will not because in some countries like the countries which are open like in the western country they tell you very frankly about these things but in india especially in india the people they don't come out with these kind of answers very easily so you have to you know tactfully see through those kind of things so footnote to aphorism 93 any causes of a disgraceful character which the patient or his friends do not like to confess at least not voluntarily the physician must endeavor to elicit by skillfully framing his questions or by private information so there are many things which the patient might feel or the attendants might feel that these these things are very disgraceful to tell so out of you know that kind of humiliation or embarrassment they do not give voluntary information to those things so it is again it falls on the physician to how to skillfully you know frame the questions or tell them about the importance of this information or from their body language try to understand whether it is a yes or a no thing you know to these belong poisoning or attempted suicides like the people who has attempted suicides or who has tried to poison themselves they or their even attendants they will you know not tell about this thing very openly onanism masturbation indulgence in ordinary or unnatural debauchery some kind of sexual practices or excesses excesses in wine or cordials or punch these are the drinks they and some people they have this habit or they are taking it a lot and other ardent beverages or coffee any kind of over indulgence in eating many times people who eat a lot or you know uh, they are also humiliated if you know they feel embarrassed they feel bad about telling these kind of things or in some particular food of a hurtful character or they are taking some like some tobacco or something uh, like this any kind of over indulgence on smoking in the past if they had some venereal diseases some sexually transmitted diseases or h some kind of unfortunate love the people they don't openly confess to these things jealousy domestic infelicity unhappiness some kind of unhappiness in the home from the wife from the husband some kind of worry grief on the account of some family misfortune there was some misfortune in the family there was some unfortunate thing which happened in the family ill usage bad usage of something bored the revenge okay there was this desire to take revenge which was not taken some injured pride some embarrassment of a pecuniary nature pecuniary means related to money there was some financial embarrassment like someone had to pay off a loan he could not pay that off uh, that kind of embarrassments some superstitious fears some kind of hunger or an imperfection in the private parts this is again a something which uh, most of the people they don't divulge many times in the females also like they are not happy with their body structure so you know the but because these kind of causes they are always there the thing with your body whatever you are feeling you know when you are looking at the body if someone is obese someone is slim someone is lean does not have proper uh, we we are always the body is always with us so any kind of imperfection we feel in ourselves this is always going to be there that causation is always going to be there so all these questions can be asked in private to the patient privately or to the attendants that do they think like this or do you feel like this so after that voluntary information when the voluntary information is given by the patient by the uh, attendant and we have taken asked the question and the voluntary information is given now is the time for those answers which the patient does not give voluntarily 
a rupture, a prolapse, or so forth. So while inquiring into the state of chronic diseases, the particular circumstances of the patient with regard to his ordinary occupations. Now, next part is that when we are inquiring into the chronic disease, like I always say that we have to understand the patient in his surroundings. How the patient reacts, how the patient is behaving, it might be something odd for us because we have a different kind of circumstance. But in his surroundings, in his circumstances, how he is doing? So we have to understand the patient in his circumstances. So to know his circumstances, we have to ask about his occupation, his usual mode of living, how is his domestic situations, how is his domestic relations, how does he function socially? How he is around his family, his friends? So all because all these things, they, for example, there is uh, this patient, one patient. I always ask about his job. How is the job going? He's a very honest person, very honest person, very decent, very honest person. But he is in a department which is most dishonest which is most dishonest. There is so much of corruption. There is so much of bribes going on. So now this person is basically in these kind of circumstances. He has a strong will. He has not uh, uh, bent to the demands of the job. But it is taking toll on him. And because it is a government job, he does not want to lose the job or you know go away from the job. So this job is taking a toll on him. So when we, we understand the patient in his circumstances, in his surroundings, then we get a more clear picture. Like if I can understand that, okay, the whole department is like this and this person is like this. I can understand that he is a man of principle and strong will. So he's not a man who will be yielding easily, who will, you know, uh, be afraid or so he's a courageous person who is dealing with these kind of circumstances in his own way. So I get a behavior, I get an understanding of the disposition of the patient. His usual mode of living, how he lives, what he eats, what he prefers, his domestic situations, how are the situations at the family, his job situations and so forth must be well considered and scrutinized. To a certain what there is in them that may tend to produce or to maintain disease. Because like we have done in aphorism uh, 7, that once you have cured the patient, it is also, it, it falls on us to tell him that what was the th thing which were making you diseased and to keep, remain away from them. Or if there is a disease, the medicine is right, still there are symptoms coming again and again. So you have to tell them that don't do these things because they will maintain the disease or produce the disease. So that in order that by their removal, the complete recovery may be promoted. So we have to tell them that don't do these things. These are the things which are making you sick. In chronic disease of females, it is especially necessary to pay attention to pregnancy, sterility, Sexual desires, accouchments mean delivery when they are delivering the child, miscarriages, suckling and the state of the menstrual discharge. So in females, we have to ask about the pregnancies, any kind of difficulties in the pregnancy or sterility, if uh, some female she is not able to bear a child or miscarriages or sucklings or their sexual desires and how is the state of menstrual discharge. With respect to the last named, more particularly uh, regarding the menstrual discharge, we should not neglect to ascertain if it reoccurs as to short intervals or is delayed beyond the proper time. Whether the menses they are coming in short intervals, the time is short or it is uh, prolonged, how many days it lasts, whether it flows, whether its flow is continuous or interrupted flow, coming and going, coming and going, that kind of flow. What is its general quantity? How dark is its color? Whether there is leucoria, whites before 
its appearance or after its termination because in most many females leucorrhea is an accompaniment with the menstrual complaints even in between also but it is an accompaniment which comes but especially what bodily or mental ailments what sensations and pains it is preceded accompanied or followed how she is generally affected by menstrual discharges how she is generally affected that is what we need to understand what we need to know <coughs> if there is leucorrhea what is its nature what sensations attend its flow in what quantity it is and what are the conditions and occasions under which it occurs so first about the menstrual discharge and then about the leucorrhea menses and leucorrhea they basically belong to the genitals of the females because when these things happen it is not only one part Uh, only genitals which are affected the whole female is affected by it the mind the body everything is affected by it so these are considered as the genitals so these are the physical genitals which can tell us about the patient if there is something to because menses and leucorrhea something which the once the menarche starts you know all those things whatever is happening it is happening from so long time why dr haneman has uh, specifically told about this thing to ask about this thing is because we become the females they become accustomed to some symptoms some kind of pain some kind of mental state during the uh, this thing for example i will give you an example there was this lady who came to me for around 2 years and i was giving her medicines again and again for something she was suffering from rheumatoid arthritis and i was giving her medicines which were you know partially acting on her again and again and i was very much you know uh, sometimes there are some patients you, whom you really want to give comfort and you know you can and the patient also believes in you that you can but somehow there is always something missing and the medicine is you know you are not getting to that medicine so that was a case with her she was so much she had so much belief in me and you know i was also doing my best whatever i can and somewhere you know you start thinking that why is she not going <laughs> you know why she keeps on coming she is not getting better she is you know some medicine makes her partially better and then so obviously because you there is this time when you think that she should go to some other doctor you cannot say it but because she is having so much faith in you the patient is a, but you feel inside for her that you know she is not getting better she should so that was a state when this thing so i finally like i told this time that when you are not get you know this state comes because i i learned from these cases that what you need to do so i whatever symptoms i was prescribing on the whole case taking i just kept it aside that i am not the first thing was that i am not going to prescribe on any of these symptoms which i know i need to find out something new i am not going to prescribe on this so i started asking uh, i started asking about her this menstrual cycle and leucorrhea and everything this so she started telling me that whenever you know uh, the periods are going to start 3 or 4 days earlier she started forgetting a lot so this was a very i said you, you never mentioned this thing she said that i think this is a common character with me my mother also had this thing so because of that she thought that it is it was a common thing you know the people might forget so these kind of symptoms you know for us it is a very characteristic thing this forgetfulness before menses but for her because she said that my mother also had this thing so she believed it to be something which is natural right, which is okay so then i am having this thing from past 20 years so i she was okay with it so these kind of symptoms they sometimes remain hidden so for that we have to ask so many things sometimes especially in these things because the next aphorism 95 is on this thing only the accessory symptoms so in chronic diseases the investigation of the signs of disease 
above mentioned and all the others must be pursued as carefully and circumstantially as possible so all these symptoms have to be investigated very very carefully and the most minute peculiarities and uh, this red color is done by me okay? this is not in the organ but this has been done by me so that you know we can understand the part the most minute peculiarity the peculiarity the peculiarities which are very minute you know so minute that the patient does not feel that to be some kind of symptom must be attended to why partly because in these diseases they are the most characteristic and least resemble those of the acute diseases and these peculiarities are not that kind of peculiarities which come minute peculiarities which come in acute diseases which we can ignore away and if a cure is to be effected they cannot be too accurately noted partly because the patients become so used to their long sufferings that they pay little or no heed to the lesser accessory symptoms the patient has been suffering or that has been a part of the body of the patient for from so long that they don't care about that symptom no heed to the lesser accessory symptoms they don't pay any attention to the symptoms which are often very pregnant with meaning very characteristic symptoms often very useful in determining the choice of remedy so the because these symptoms have always been the part of the patient they have always been right from the beginning right from the childhood right from the minar right from the teenage they have always been the part of patient system they have always been the part of that sura very characteristic part but because they have been suffering from that from so long so somewhere the patient starts feeling that it is me but okay it is you know like someone who is um, you know having diarrhea in the morning from childhood and now he he is 35 40 years old he will not tell that the first motion which comes in the morning is a very loose motion it is a it is like a diarrhea they will not mention it when we ask about the characteristic of the stool if we ask then that uh, okay do you pass the stool you will say yes okay if we stop there that information is gone we have to ask that what kind of stool it is is it a formed stool it is a diarrhea or you know it is a hard stool what what kind of stool it is then he will mention that it is a like a loose stool every day but if we get that information that every day you know we can think about remedies which have that morning diarrheas we can think about sulfur we can think about some other remedies and regard them almost as a necessary part of their condition they have always noted that this is a part of my condition it is part of me almost as health they don't take it as a diseased symptom they don't take it as a diseased phenomena the real feeling of which they have well nee forgotten in their sometimes 15 or 20 years of suffering they have forgotten that thing in the so long suffering and they can scarcely bring themselves to believe that these accessory symptoms these greater or less deviations from the healthy state can have any connection with their principal malady and they will not believe that these symptoms are important i don't feel that this is an important thing they 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 don't because they are looking at those symptoms as health my mother had this i am having this so this is not something which is you know uh, a disease thing many times the people whose father had some kind of itching on the leg or their grandfather had they will not even tell about that itching one of my patients he had dermatitis on the legs he was taking medicine from me for 8 to 9 months and he mentioned that itching after 8 to 9 months because at that uh, in that weather it got aggravated so they they don't think of these things as unhealthy state they have been part of them but these are very important because they are very characteristic they have always been part of them 
they have always been the part of disease they have that characteristic thing which can tell us about the sora but we can only get them when we are going into that minutest of the details of everything then only we can get those things if we are just taking the case superficially then we will always miss those things so always look for these accessory symptoms if you find them one one of the patients again the same same with that as it was with uh, that lady he was taking the medicine uh, he had this uh, kidney some kidney disease some uh, autoimmune kidney disease and he was taking medicine from so long and you would get better get worse get better get worse like this then one fine day he, i started again like this you know i started asking about the perspiration and this and he and then he said that uh, usually i don't get perspiration uh, he said i i have this perspiration which is very profuse it does not smell it does not stain it is on the head and uh, and it is profuse whenever it is you know like so i said that okay when do you perspire more he said when i am eating food and <laughs> again it is a very characteristic thing uh, eating food yes he says that i only perspire this much when i am eating food i said uh, when the food is chilly like it has more spices or something like this he said no even normal food even without spices uh, without this thing like you know he said that when there is some uh Cel- some religious celebration in the house we make uh, this food without spices so even if i eat that food i start perspiring so again a very characteristic symptom but because it has been always the part of the uh, patient he never mentioned it he never described it so beside this patients themselves differ so much in their dispositions that some especially the so called hypochondriacs and the other persons of great sensitiveness and impatient of suffering portray their symptoms in two vivid colors and in order to induce the physician to give them relief describe their ailments in exaggerated expressions so then there is this class of patients who are hypochondriacs who are very great who sorry who are very sensitive to the sufferings they are very impatient to get better so sometimes they describe their expression in an exaggerated sense i always give this example that you know this pain pain is something which cannot be measured there is no scale for the pain it is always a subjective feeling like we ask the pain you know uh, okay someone got a prick here in the hand if you ask one person okay out of one of 10 how much pain you are feeling you will say two or three at the max to the other person you give this prick you will ask someone like camomilla or nakswamika that how much pain is there he said oh, 9 9 10 11 11 it's the same prick so the pain is basically noted or described because of the sensitivity of the patient so the people who have more sensitivity they will exaggerate the expression so that the patient physician become serious about it you know to give them relief so what what needs to be done in these kind of patients footnote a pure fabrication of symptoms and sufferings will never be met within hypochondriacs the thing with hypochondriacs is that they are not feigners they don't feign the disease they don't fabricate they don't make the symptoms there are symptoms which they feel to be very much painful the way they tell those symptoms that way is exaggerated that expression is exaggerated but they are suffering there are symptoms a comparison of the sufferings now how we can see is even in the most impatient of them <coughs> even the most impatient hypochondriacs they will not fabricate the symptoms which can be seen how we can see this a comparison of the sufferings they complained of at various times when the physician gives them nothing at all or something quite unmedicinal proves this plainly when you give them placebo when you give them sn their symptoms remain like this same the people who are feigning or the people who are into that you know state some kind they will start getting better 
because they wanted the attention of the uh, physician they wanted him to change the remedy they wanted him to give some remedy so as soon as you give them the sl or placebo they will start getting better so this proves this plainly but in hypochondriacs you know the symptoms are there yes they are exaggerated the patient himself is very uh, sensitive their expression is you know very violent kind of but the symptoms are there proves this plainly but we must deduct something from their exaggeration what we can understand from their exaggeration is that at all events ascribe the strong character of their expressions to their excessive sensibility in which case this very exaggeration of their expressions when talking of their ailments become of itself an important symptom in the list of feature of which the portrait of the disease is composed so this feature being hypochondriac you know the way they are expressing this excessive sensibility this excessive sensitivity towards the pain towards the suffering this in itself become a very important symptom we cannot give them the remedy which are not expressive or which are you know more controlling of themselves which are we cannot give all those remedies we cannot give those remedies which are indifferent to the pain which are you know more bearing more strong will we cannot give them so this itself becomes an important symptom the case is different with insane persons and rascally feigner dishonest feigners of the disease who are just feigning the disease to get an attention so in those cases if you give the sl if you give the placebo they will start getting better the symptoms will start getting better so from there we can see that this is not a hypochondriac patient but more of a feigner or more of a attention seeking person other individuals of an opposite character now there are hypochondriacs and then there are completely other people you know other individuals of an opposite character however partly from indolence either they are indolent to tell the things you know that uh, he is asking so much if i answer he will ask more so they are indolent partly from false modesty they don't want to disappoint the uh, doctor they don't want to you know uh, 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 how are you uh, yes, yes everything is good 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 doctor we have we have come to you now so there is no problem everything is good you know so they don't want to upset the physician so from that falls modesty from that falls uh, uh, kind of humil and uh, humility humbleness they, they they will not tell the problems properly partly from kind of mildness of the disposition sometimes the people are mild you know sometimes the doctor if asks in a tone like this how are you so you know because of the mildness or some timidity they will you know become afraid yes i am good i am good Yes, everything is good. Or from weakness of mind, they are not able to understand. They don't understand that these symptoms are important. Many times, you know, when you ask the patient, okay, how is your appetite? Hey, it is good. It is good. I just have these problems. My appetite is okay. So they don't understand that the kind of appetite is, you know, the symptoms we need. that we we are not asking about his appetite as a problem we just want to know how his generals are so from that kind of weakness of the mind they will not mention they they cannot describe the aggravations or ameliorations so they don't give you much history these kind of individual they are quite opposite to the hypochondriac patient refrain from mentioning a number of their symptoms or describe them in vague terms not in very clearly description of the symptom is not given or allege some of them to be of no consequence like i told you that uh, it, it, it is of no consequence it has nothing to do with my disease but they they need to understand that these symptoms are important for us to find a remedy so many times we have to work on the patients before even starting the case that whatever the we are asking you we are asking you so that we can find a remedy out of thousands of remedies which is basically similar to your you know uh, behavior and to your because this is the causation of the disease so until and unless we go for the causation of the disease we don't cure that thing the disease will keep coming so we have to spend some time 10 15 minutes to make them understand 
द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ दिस थिंग केस टेकिंग now as certainly as we should listen particularly to the patient's description of his sufferings and sensations and attach credence especially to his own expressions wherewith he endeavors to make us understand his ailments so dr nimal saying that we have to certainly give this you know like i was talking on the uh, when we started this thing case taking that the subjective symptoms are important because the subjective symptoms only sub the feeling of the patient the suffering and the sensations which he is feeling that can be only told by the patient it cannot be told by the friends it cannot be told by the attendants so we have to also keep a note if some attendant is saying that uh, you know his head headache is like bursting headache he cannot say that thing he does not know about that thing whether it is bursting whether it is pulsating you know so we 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 have to be very careful we have to be very uh, aware that from where we are getting the information subjective symptoms cannot be taken from the attendants they don't know about it they can tell their experience with the patient they can tell about what they feel what they see but they cannot tell what the patient sees or feels so subjective information has to come from the subject that is the only way even as a physician i cannot understand the feeling or i cannot guess it so that will be a guess work there are some doctors who do this thing and i always tell some uh, st- uh, the students or wherever i go that don't fall for those things they look amazing but they are not at all of practice like many doctors they uh, nowadays there are some schools who are telling the students or uh, the doctors to prescribe on the delusions that the delusion is a state of mind a feeling of a mind i was i came to know about their one of such case that there was this uh, lady who had this you know uh, cerebral palsy child and then she had two child before that cerebral palsy child who were normal so she belonged to uh, uh she was not very good financially the family was not very good financially they were they are laborers and they do work at with a daily wage so with that she is you know uh, upbringing the children she is taking care of she is going to her job and doing that hard work and taking care of the child so this doctor who was going to prescribe he said that her feeling uh, i cannot remember sorry that she is feeling uh, wretched that her delusion is that uh, so he took the rubric delusion wretched she is because she is suffering so much in her class that class of the con- that economic class everyone is suffering everyone is suffering but taking this kind of delusion and then prescribing on that thing okay everyone uh, who is standing around that doctor the student they go into a state of wow wow but what she is feeling she can only tell how can i say how she is feeling even right now what i am feeling no no one can tell that thing that is a subjective thing if i say that i feel wretched so even then i have to understand the patient in that circumstances like in the in the organ is told understand the circumstances of the patient that yes in that economic class with that thing everyone is feeling that thing so everyone is the same remedy no how it can be delusion has to come from a state of delusion when it is not a reality that is the reality of that economic class delusion something that i am doing very good but still i have that state like briani or surainam that state of poverty although having so much of money but 
so delusion is something unreal real her reality is that she is uh, suffering that is the reality of the patient of the person so making these kind of assumptions have taken you know this is basically uh, a very dishonest representation of the case and it only demoralizes the doctors and the students because they are not going to get results by this way obviously not going to get results but that demoralizes that oh i am maybe there is some problem with me no there is no problem with the student i always tell that that you don't have any problem even your teachers if they are not you know uh, able to tell you the right thing it is not their problem the problem was the guidance which was given to them that was the problem the problem was what was told the knowledge which was shared so never even the there are some students who are here along with the doctors so i always tell you that never don't don't take it that there is some problem with you no you just have to go and try to understand the things in a right way they are very clearly written that the suffering and the sensations of the patient can only be told by the patient so that is the only source of subjective information because in the mouths of his friend and attendants they are usually altered and erroneously stated friends and attendants are the second source which can tell but the subjective symptoms the sensation the sufferings of the patient they will be altered they will be erroneously um, wrongly stated physician is the third source even after the attendants so if the second source is erroneous how can the third source be right about this thing so any subjective symptoms when you are writing it down don't write it from yourself don't you know guess it let it come if it comes good if it does not come even then it is good something else will come so certainly on the other hand in all diseases but especially in the chronic ones the investigation of the true complete picture and its peculiarities so whenever we are investigating the true picture that is why there are false pictures of the chronic diseases the case taking which will be done like i told you in an erroneous way in an altered way in a wrong way that will not be a true picture of the disease so when we have to investigate the true picture we have this desire to go and know the truth of the disease or the picture of the disease then there are some peculiarities and there are some demands from the physician to get a true picture there are some things which are required of the physician that physician has to remember whenever he or she is taking the case what are those demands complete picture and peculiarities demands special circumspection the first thing is circumspection what is circumspection it is carefulness being very careful what i am taking whether i am taking it right or in a wrong way and unwilling to take this unwilling to guess unwilling to speculate that this is the thinking of the patient so we have for the first point for that true investigation is to be circumspect very careful that whatever i am taking is as it is told by the patient then tact skill you know try the same question should be you have to have ways of asking the same question in different ways the same question has to be repeated again and again in different ways but not in the same language not in the same way but different ways knowledge of human nature what is the human nature usually how the ego behaves like we have uh, talked about this thing in the recent uh, workshop on observation when we have talked about that you know uh, the shadow theory 
and about this pain and player theory principles so we have to understand how the human nature basically works we are human nature we when we look at ourselves how our nature is working how we are you know uh, throwing our bad uh, what we think to be the bad qualities into a shadow and you know trying to project something so we 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 must know about the no, uh, human nature we can understand human nature more better on us how we are reacting that is why i always say because it is a requisite it is what is demanded we have started with the organ uh, recently but i have been telling this thing from so many whenever i have gone anywhere i have always told that try to understand yourself because the more you understand yourself the more you will understand about the human nature you are human nature and understanding that thing is basically a requisite that will make you more observant about the things you can understand why the patient is reacting in this way why the patient is behaving in this way why he is not telling me something why he is telling me something or what he is telling through certain signs of his body and even dr anman say that it is a very very important to know about the human nature caution in conducting the inquiry what kind of questions i have to put ask what i should not ask or the way i should not ask like uh, that direct question should never be asked where the answer is yes or no those kind of things should not be asked some questions should be asked it privately some questions the patient will be more easy or more willing to tell when there are so two or three people there so that kind of caution that kind of tact we have to develop and patience in an eminent degree impatience is a bad thing in a physician it has to be very very physician has to be very 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 patient while taking the case in prescribing in an eminent degree in the highest degree the patience should be there although we call the patient a patient that because he has to be patient you know with the suffering but on the other hand the physician has to be very patient because if you are in hurry then you will miss all the information you will take the patient where you want to take him if you have lycopodium in your mind you will take the patient to the lycopodium okay you like hot food yes everyone likes hot food okay so we will take the patient towards that kind of thing if there are patient sitting outside and you are in a pressure okay you have to see very fast very fast that that will impact the result that will if you think that today you are not you are in a hurry tell the patient to come give give some other time tell them to come in the evening tell them to come tomorrow because when an inquiry is to be done the inquiry is being done to find out the true picture of the disease that we have to keep in mind if we can find the true picture of the disease we can find the right remedy so all these things they have to be there for a good physician to find out the true picture of the disease aphorism 99 on the whole the investigation of acute diseases or of such as have existed but a short time is much the easiest for the physician because all the phenomena and deviations from the health that has been but recently lost are still fresh in the memory of the patient and his friends so the investigation of acute disease is more easy why because the phenomena has started recently whatever deviations whatever the uh, symptoms in the health have come they are very much fresh in the patient's memory and in the memory of his attendants still continue to be noble and striking now i have seen many uh, i just want to add something which i have noticed i have met many physicians many students who have become physicians also now many physicians otherwise also 
some physicians they are very good or they are better in prescribing in chronic diseases and there are some physicians who are better in prescribing in acute diseases like one of my colleague he is good in prescribing in chronic diseases but he always say that you know whenever there is something acute i cannot find the remedy i cannot find the right remedy many times he will call me or many times he will you know send the patient to me that okay you have a look at him so i started thinking about and then these aphorisms i the thing is that we have to switch gears between a chronic case and between if a patient if a person when for example an acute case has come from 2 3 days something has started so the, like what i find in that one of my colleague that he will start taking the case from the whole point of view and will start searching for the symptoms and symptoms or even in the acute part he will keep asking for what symptoms this thing and this thing and that thing and that thing that is not to be done in the acute cases that is the mistake then you will get confused recent phenomena whenever it has started just take the case from that point onwards whatever you find two symptoms three symptoms characteristic just prescribe on those symptoms then there are many people who are like this you know they have this they, they don't have many uh, one of my student he does not have much patience you know he prescribes very quickly so he does thing very good in acute but not in chronic ones because chronic case taking or investigation it requires time it requires the patient it requires because you have to have a mind which can go through that maze which has been created from so many years and then find out something so the people who are impatient or the physician who is impatient or does not have is not laborious he he does not have this uh, thing about you know that i cannot put so much effort in that thing they basically don't do good in prescribing in chronic diseases so we have to be both way we have to be you know um, malleable according to the circumstances if there is an emergency case you know you know the patient is not going to have much time we cannot sit for one hour two hour taking his case we have to change the gears we have to adapt accordingly aphorism 3 we have to adapt according to the situations we have to adapt our knowledge according to the patient so this adaptation is very much required in a physician the physician who can adapt easily can see all kind of cases and have very good results in all kind of cases you just have to adapt that is more important so the physician certainly requires to know everything in such cases also but he has much less to inquire into don't inquire more into the acute cases inquire in a less manner less manner means just about this phenomena don't go beyond it they are for the most part spontaneously detailed to him and this acute cases they don't require long case takings because the memory is fresh phenomena is happening the patient can tell you about the striking features how it started how it is going about the thermals about the thirst about the behavior which has changed in himself that can be very spontaneously detailed so don't go past it but when you have to go past it in a chronic disease then don't go small then go in detail take your time ask about everything until and unless you are very much satisfied that yes we have got symptoms on which we can prescribe so we will finish at 99 because uh, i think from 100 onwards it will be about the epidemic diseases so we will talk about it on next wednesday again please go through these aphorisms any questions you feel regarding the case taking i have told you that we will discuss about dr kant's case taking also um, maybe we'll do it in some later sessions i will take some points out of because he has three chapters on the examination of the uh, patient you can also go through it please go through it i will uh, request you that you go through it 
there will be more clarity and we can talk about some points uh, from that part also because there are ma- every author every philosopher has written on the case taking there are their own experiences which they have introduced into the case taking which is uh, given by uh, these aphorisms which are given by dr hanneman like dr kent introduces one thing into the this part that you know never take history from the attendant out of the attendant never take the history from an emotional attendant because they will give you a perception of theirs for example if you are taking uh, the husband is husband's history from the the wife the wife has a perception of husband that he is this kind of person you know he never listens to me he does not take me out he is a very selfish person so that is a common perception so if you take that thing and prescribe accordingly then you know we will be at a very wrong end of the medicine so these kind of experiences they are added i told you mine what i have noted so uh, all these then you you will have your own experiences also when you are taking the case they are also added so it is an unending knowledge all these experiences they are adding and adding and adding and they are making so beautiful pictures so the more we we go into it the more we learn the more we practice it you know after you have taken taken 50 cases 100 cases you you start think getting a grip on it you start getting a grip on you know the changes in the case the way you are taking the case and all those cases the way you have to mold yourself the the, the things which you learn on those cases because homeopathy is a very practical science so the learning has to be very practical it cannot be theoretical thing it has to be a practical thing for example there is uh, i'll just show you a recent uh, we had a camp so there was this boy i'll just show you and how small things basically uh, can lead to the remedy very small thing but it is a characteristic thing just look at his eyes and we will discuss that about the eyes just look at his eyes idhar dekho what can you uh, say about his eyes is a case of autism you can write in the chat also what whatever you you know feel about him see guys i think he was around 2 and a half 3 3 4 years old boy so what can you feel uh, what can you uh, see in the eyes there is one message shining smart eyes very very nice yes can't focus yeah because he is basically uh, the children they don't have that kind of focuses and he is basically an autistic child so the focus is always a problem dr jonkol has written shining smart eyes very good one thing is that very shining eyes very shining eyes any characteristic of shining basically shows a strong intellect but then there is much more to the shining part yes uh, i can say that the when we saw it i was having some of the uh, doctors and students with me uh, dr rishabh was there and there are many students also when i told about this characteristic i think the video is not doing that much uh, you know uh, the video does not show that thing very strongly 
but if you can still it shows it the color of the eye they are black eyes but they were so dark black i have never seen such dark black eyes even it was very difficult to see the iris in those eyes and it is not because of any kind of opacity any kind of this thing he can see well but the color of the eye was so dark black that even you cannot see the iris through it so dark black and shiny eyes these are the eyes of snake remedies the snake remedies usually have these kind of eyes very shining and very dark dark discoloration the darkest of the discoloration they belong to the uh, not discoloration even the colors they belong to the uh, snakes but not in the communities who are usually dark don't take there but where it is not expected to be even the mother had very light eyes the father does not have that kind of eyes he had that kind of eyes uh, we forget we, sh we should have taken the eye this of the mother also for the comparison so when we were in the camp i told all of them that okay have a look at all the black eyes even the children even the adults and then compare this blackness to those usually the children who, uh, who are suffering from some kind of behavioral disorders or they have that blackness but a dull blackness the blackness is dull and not that dark blackness so even smallest of the things in the case can tell you about the patient so this comes when you keep practicing on the case taking when you know what you have to look for that is the most important thing you must know what you are looking for you are looking for something which is characteristic which is something different which is something unique uncommon striking thing and when you get those striking things those uncommon things those characteristic things you are ready for giving a remedy there is one more message dolls eyes okay yes Mm, many many dolls have those kind of eyes. They they are very dark. So with that, uh, I will take your leave. Thank you so much. And if you have again, if you have any questions, we can talk about them. Just send the questions to either directly to me, to Doctor John Cole, to Doctor Rishab, anywhere wherever you feel comfortable. You can send your questions, and we can discuss them. Thank you. Thank you so much and have a very good night.